What is most awkward Halloween costume guess you've ever gotten wrong? I'll start. A buddy of mine, when he was maybe 5 or 6, really wanted to be a horse for Halloween. His mother and grandmother worked very hard on the costume, so the big day came and there was a costume contest at his school. He thought he had a good shot of winning. He was very proud of the costume. So who was the big winner? Everyone thought my buddy in the horse costume was Alf. He cried the whole time while collecting his prize. I thought that I looked like a Borg from Star Trek. Everyone else thought I was the Gimp from Pulp Fiction. Like, everyone. Wasn't me, but I was in a dorm elevator with a few other people and a girl looks over to a group of guys and goes oh are you guys going to the white trash party? They weren't. Ron Weasley, I was actually dressed as Arthur Dent, but I have red hair, so. One year I was in avocado, like one split in half with the pit still intact. Some guy at a party said, dude, are you the Incredible Hulk's clit? Dude doesn't even know she Hulk, not impressed. Not a costume mistake, just my dad being a dumb kid. When he was 11-ish, he was watching a World War II movie. He was too young to realize what the war was about, or that it was even real history. He just thought the German soldiers had really cool outfits marches. He begged my grandmom, his mom, to make him a costume. She, being the I'll always say yes type of mother, made him a Hitler costume. Halloween night everyone in the neighborhood did a costume parade for the kids. He walked through the predominantly Jewish community goose stepping, wondering why everyone was booing. He still hasn't forgiven my grandmother for not explaining to him why he shouldn't wear that costume. That is a hilarious visual if you imagine the kid smiling from ear to ear. Not me, but a student teacher in high school. A fairly large, really large, girl dressed up as a Dalmatian that year. The student teacher mistook her for a cow, in front of the whole class. I cross-dressed once a few years back for Halloween, had girls help me out and did not tell a soul I was doing it. People didn't think I was in costume, got hit on, and people thought it was awkward when my then GF made out with me. I went as a teabag and everybody thought I was a bag of weed. After a while, I just went with it. At a college Halloween party, my sweet mate's girlfriend was a sailor in white and blue. I asked her if she was the Pillsbury Doughboy. Every year my girlfriend and I walk all over downtown taking pictures with random people in the costumes. One time I took a picture with a homeless guy thinking that he was a post-apocalyptic survivor. Ended up giving him $10 to iron out some of the awkwardness after. In 1986, I was 9. The year Halley's Comet made an appearance, I dressed as Edmund Halley. Most people thought I was supposed to be George Washington. Obviously, I was one of the cool kids. When I was 12 I went as Britney Spears schoolgirl version. My brother was a hobo and my friend a fairy. We went trick or treating and some lady answered the door and said, let me see. So we have a green thing with wings, a hippie, and a S. The lady was actually predicting your futures, not commenting on your costumes. Back in middle school one year I went as Neo and my friend went as Blade. Everyone thought we were the trench coat mafia. This was terribly awkward. Ugly Betty, I wasn't in costume, I have glasses. This wasn't Halloween, but I once went to work and caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. I was wearing a white short sleeve polo, very blue pants, and black dress shoes with a thick heel. That's when I realized I was dressed exactly like Homer Simpson. A friend planned a trashy themed pub crawl, where most people came wearing threadbare, crappy, thrift shop clothing. One dude came wearing Gucci shades, Sevens jeans, Ed Hardy shirt, the whole deal. I complimented him on his creative interpretation of trashy, he was not in costume. I was wearing a suit, a cape, a skull mask resting on the top of my head, not on my face, and holding a scythe. A girl walked by me and said, OMG, are you a hobbit I'm short, but seriously, a hobbit? I didn't guess someone, someone guessed mine. She thought I was Robin Hood, a female Robin Hood, I was Link, I'm a guy. I was at a party when a guy in glasses wearing nothing but cut off jeans and green body paint walks by, sort of like a green version of Tobias Funky in blue man group paint. I stop and ask him if he is dressed as the Hulk. He looks at and says no, the Hulk doesn't wear glasses, 
I reply so what are you supposed to be he then looks at me p frick you he walks away. My confusion leads me to go back up to him and ask what I did to offend him. He responds by shoving his hand in my face screaming at me to get away from him. I was so dumbfounded I didn't know how to react. I just walked away and I still don't know what he was dressed as. I wish I had never read this comment for it the questions raised will bother me for the rest of time. A gay guy at work brought in a picture of him and his partner in superhero costumes. My guess. So, you guys went as the ambiguously gay duo nope. Fantastic 4. I don't follow superheroes and I tried my best. My best friend is a cute black girl. No matter what her costume is, the majority of guesses are Beyonce. Could be worse. A pregnant nun. She wasn't pregnant. As a general life rule, I don't call anyone pregnant unless I can see a head poking out. Last night my friend had a few too many drinks in him. Just as we're stepping outside to get some air, a young lady walks into the costume party. He stops and yells to me, holy crap, she's Harry Potter, that's awesome. He then high fives her. She explained to us that she was not in costume. She was a piano teacher coming straight from work. She looked literally nothing like Harry Potter. She fooled all the muggles. Last year, my sister just started a new job and was told everyone dresses up for Halloween. She walked into the office, saw her co-worker and yells out, What are you supposed to be? A cholo. He is just a bald white guy who wears baggy clothes and wasn't in a costume. Racist guesses are the best. Drunken me. What are you? A s fairy or something? Her. I'm an angel. Not in that outfit you're not. In this case, the costume was more awkward than the guesses. In third grade, I somehow convinced my mom to make me a meep from Commander King 3 costume. She was well aware that no one would have any idea what it was and that this would make me upset, but I was insistent. I wish I still had pictures because it was pretty authentic, basically just a round green thing with a big mouth. But that's all a meep is. Needless to say, my mom was right. Frog was the most common guess, which sort of pee me off. But I got really angry when various adults managed to guess obscure characters that I also loved. Slimer from Ghostbusters a green Pac-Man inky from Pac-Man. That weren't right. Pretty sure my mom never made me a costume again. I came to work dressed as a ninja, and everyone thought I was a terrorist. One lady saw me walking in, went bug-eyed, and ran back into the ladies room. Even after I told my, then, boss I was a ninja, he kept saying stuff like, you should have brought a gun, you should shout something in gibberish like aaaa, he's an idiot. Not sure if idiot co-workers or cheap ninja costume. I guess she was Pat from SNL. She actually wasn't wearing a costume. I dressed as a steampunk airship pilot, went out in Saint Louis. Everyone thought I had a phenomenal Charles Lindbergh costume. An old man sang a song to me about it. The best thing about steampunk is that even if they have no idea what you're doing, you still look classy as heck. In high school everyone would wear costumes to school on Halloween. I decided to go with the classic sheet on the head with holes cut out of it ghost costume. Everyone thought I was a clansman. On Halloween in 2001 I dressed up as Abe Lincoln. Even though I'm a girl, it was a last minute costume. I was in 7th grade and didn't think I was gonna go but my friend called me on the actual day. My friend's dad took us. And at one house, he asked the man who was giving out the candy to guess who I was. He guessed Osama. I went to a Halloween party at a bar several years ago. I saw a man of considerable girth wearing a Hawaiian shirt, a baseball cap, a mustache, and aviator shades. I proudly approached him, tapped his shoulder, and as he turned I declared, freaking perfect John Candy. He just shouted, I'm Magnum freaking P.I. Butthole. One year I went as Calvin and Hobbes. I had the black pants, the red t-shirt with horizontal black stripes, and a wig of messy blonde hair. I even had a stuffed tiger to carry around. Everyone thought I was Siegfried and Roy. I retaliated, Calvin style, by making stupid faces every time a camera was pointed at me. Back in 04 in high school I dressed up like a hobo once. Got a crappy trench coat, 
beanie, wore six watches on one arm and a bag on one foot instead of a shoe. To top it off I got a fake beard and an empty root beer bottle. This was some quality hobo wine. First house we go trick or treating to- I tell my friends to wait before ringing the doorbell. So I can act like I was sleeping on the doorstep. I get in position and they ring the doorbell. The kid that opens the door with his mom yells Osama bin Laden and kicks me in the head. Q headache and a slew of IU Osama questions all night. I guess brown and beard equals terrorist. Till hobos wear multiple watches at the same time. Last year at this party I saw this girl with a bumpet in her hair, super tan, skanky heels so I was like, oh hey that's funny, you're snooky, I'm Hermione Granger she looked at me and said, why do people keep saying that, I'm not wearing a costume, awkward, she deserves it. A friend of mine decided to go as Che Guevara this year, everyone else thought he was Gaddafi. Me, oh cool, OS vampire, her. I'm not dressed up for Halloween. Me. Oh cool. OS. A Walmart employee tapes Walmart bags over the entirety of her person. This random mash of oil, sweat and plastic was supposed to represent a bag lady. She asks me what I think her costume is and the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, your Walmart trash. It was awkward. Because she didn't laugh and I simply squinted my eyes as close to shut as possible. P.S. Clint Eastwood would have approved of my squinting skill. Not sure if this counts, but we often did group costumes in college. Junior year, we decided to go as Greek gods and goddesses. That was definitely our poorest year as a group. There were six girls and I was one of only two guys that did it. My friend went as Zeus, lightning bolts. Pretty easy. I could have been Poseidon. Have a nice trident. Maybe go as Apollo. Something to do with the sun. Nope. I chose Hades. I thought I'd try to look like Hades from Disney's Hercules. It was actually pretty close. But when you humanize a cartoon character with flaming blue hair, pale skin and dark eyes, turns out it's pretty gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. One person that night recognized me as Hades. Everyone else, though, had a different interpretation. I said, ah, you're pothead to a girlfriend's friend. Nope, Johnny Appleseed. Don't say Miss Piggy. Don't say Miss Piggy. I dressed up as Captain Falcon from F-Zero, and was sprinting down a hill when a girl shouts, Are you Mega Man? Her boyfriend in an angry rage yelled, No, he's C. Falcon. Why are we even dating and he slapped her. I couldn't stop laughing when she punched him in the gut. I have a good friend of mine, whom I have known since about age 6. Well, around age 6 or 7 he had soft tissue cancer behind his left eye and lost his eye. Instead of getting a fake glass eyeball, he went the route of just no eye and they grafted a piece of skin over the eyeball socket. Well, now flash forward to his age of 24, and I cannot count the hilarious times that people have asked how did you get the mask so perfect or some variation thereof. We used to prank people and tell them, it's not a mask, there was a BB gun accident when we were kids, anyways. Felt that was relevant. The story is funny, but that doesn't seem like too great of a prank. We used to prank people and tell them he lost his eye in a different way than he really did. I took a blind friend, who didn't feel like dressing up, to a Halloween party. He was standing by a wall, holding his cane. And some guy walks up grinning, looks my friend up and down, and says, I get IT, you're blind, and waves his hand in front of my friend's face, then says, oh, you're G-O-O-O-D. I had a couple old ladies stop me at big costume party, they were arguing over if I was a cloud or a sheep, I just smiled and said that they both were real close, you should have seen their faces when it was announced that the tampon was the $100 winner. What's your most awkward sorry, but I don't work here experience. One time my best friend and I were in Walmart digging in the $5 movie bin. We're standing there looking through all these crappy movies hoping to find a gem when this random lady walks up and asks if we work there. I say, no mom, I'm sorry we don't, and we continue digging through the bin. Well, this wasn't good enough for this lady. She stands there and asks us something about finding volleyball equipment. I forget exactly what she was looking for specifically. I ask if she looked through the sporting goods, which she was standing right in front of and she says, Well yes of course but I didn't see it. I thought you all would know where it would be. 
At this point my friend and I are both a little frustrated with the situation, so I tell her that we have no idea where else the volleyball equipment would be at in this store. I ask her if she had gone to Big 5 Sporting Goods store. This is when all heck broke loose. She raises her voice and starts yelling about how she wasn't going to spend that much money and ranting and raving about the cost difference and this and that. My friend and I just looked at each other and walked away. Not awkward but helpful. I notice every helper in this store was ignoring this elderly lady. I happened to be wearing the same color of shirt and she came up to me for help. I happily helped her and even helped her go up to the checkout lane. Tells me I'm a good employee and will write a nice letter to the company about me. A little backstory first. When I was about 11 years old I went with my family to the Philadelphia Zoo. It was about 80 degrees out and little me decided to wear a hoodie for some reason. Of course I get too hot to need to take it off, but I forgot to wear a shirt underneath. So my parents bought me a shirt that said Philadelphia Zoo on it. So my family and I are walking around the gift shop right before we are about to leave. Little me is checking out some sweet stuffed animals when a middle aged woman comes up to me and taps me on the shoulder. Excuse me. She says where can I find sunscreen I was kind of confused when she asked me. But I was happy to help since she asked politely. I quickly looked around and saw some non souvenirs behind the counter. Uh, I'm um guessing you can find it at the counter over there. I said. Then this woman gave me a look like she wasn't sure if I was intelligent or not. So you're just guessing she says. The was she said it made me realize something was off, but I didn't make the connection. Remember, I am 11 freaking years old. Yeah. I mean, there are batteries and stuff back there so there should be sunscreen. Then she gave me a quick smile and said okay, thank you for your help. I didn't have a clue what had happened until I told my dad what happened as we were leaving. He started laughing and pointed out I was wearing the Philadelphia Zoo shirt and this broad thought I had worked there. Because every kid should be able to support themselves with a job by at least 11 years old, if not earlier. My first day of class someone thought I was a professor. I was only 20 and I didn't think I looked that old. You gotta stop wearing the sweaters with the elbow pads. I was on my break and decided to walk down the mall to the Bon, Macy's now. I was wandering around seeing what the sales were, when I was approached by one of those high and mighty, Rich B. She asked where something was, and I told her I did not work there. She got all huffy and stormed away. I went about my browsing. A few minutes later here she comes again, this time with an actual store employee in tow saying, that's her, that's the one that won't help me. The employee, actually a department manager, asked me why I was out of my department, and that I knew better than to not help a customer while approached. She then asked what department I was from. Finally a chance to speak. I replied, I sail shoes a, eh? where I was promptly interrupted, and give another tongue lashing, all the while Rich B is sitting there with a smirk on her face, manager told me to get to the office and wait for her, I turned on my heel and walked away towards the exit doors instead, she catches up to me and loudly demands to know if I wanted fired, or if I was going to get to the office, I responded, I am going to my office, she said there were no officers in that direction and demanded I turn in my name tag and gather my things. I took my name badge off, handed it to while saying, I don't think my district manager is going to like you firing his top selling store manager from Kinney Shoes. She looked down at the name badge, and back up to me white as a sheet. Manager hands my badge back, mumbled an apology, and scurried away with her embarrassment and rich B. There is a lesson in this. Take your name badge off when you are on break and go to other stores. There is a lesson in this. Take your name badge off when you are on break and go to other stores. This. If she'd called your boss and told him how you were impersonating a Macy's employee, they'd probably have taken her word over yours. Fortunately she's clearly not that creative. While at my aunt's funeral, was wearing my black suite. Hair was looking presentable but my shoes were two different sizes and brands. Apparently, I looked like I worked at that fernal home. Probably because I was standing off to the side because I only knew 3 out of the 50 people there including my aunt. Anyway, I was asked at least twice if I worked there where is this, by who else, family members I had never met. They thought it was funny after I told them. I still don't know who they are. I work at a KFC near a large shopping center, so after a shift, 
I decided to go shopping. Any shop I went into that is known for red colors. I was asked to help multiple people. Come on. Can you not see the hat and flower all over my pants? I work as a mechanic and part of my job is to collect parts if our suppliers are busy. I was sent down to a wrecking yard to pick up a second hand transmission and because I was in my work overalls some guy asked me pretty rudely where all the rims are kept. I just rolled with it and said something pretty vague along the lines of not exactly sure. Out by the front fence I think. My answer clearly wasn't specific enough because I heard him mumble under his how hard can your job be. He must have felt like such a donghead when he joined the lineup right as I was paying for the trans and leaving. Honestly, I doubt he noticed if he was too oblivious to notice your uniform. I was in Normandy France at one of the landing beaches, and some American tourists thought I was a tour guide. Me being the kind of person I am, went along with it and started teaching them about the beach's history, and telling them good places to visit. I had only been there for an hour but I did know the history rather well. I continued talking them through the landing and taking questions. Then the tour guide turned up. I just laughed and walked away. They thanked me in a confused manner. I don't think it dawned on them at that precise moment that I was a random man and not a tour guide. I misread it and thought you said you were there during the Normandy's landings and thought to myself what in God's name were tourists doing there? And how on earth did you give them a tour lol silly me? Cool story though. This has happened to me more than once. When I was a paramedic, I had just finished my shift and popped into the grocery store to grab something quick for dinner breakfast. Apparently an older woman's eyesight was off that day because she thought I worked there. Grocery store employees don't dress at all like a paramedic, but whatever. I helped her load a few frozen chickens into her cart. She thanks me profusely and wanted to get my name so she could tell my manager what a great employee I am. So I gave her the name and number of my supervisor. Next Monday, my supervisor calls me into his office and asked me to explain this voicemail. Hello, my name is old woman. I just wanted to say that you have one of the finest employees in the entire grocery store. He helped me load all the chickens I needed for my pod luck into my cart immediately and without hesitation. And he was so kind and generous with his time and blah blah blah. His voicemail actually cut her off. The message was so long. So she called back and left a second voicemail just to finish her praise. My supervisor just stared at me. I stared back. We never spoke of it again. I think he was of the opinion that I was moonlighting as some sort of grocery store chicken loading demigod. A couple years ago I was in the electronic department of Walmart helping my mom find a decent Blu-ray player to give to my grandma as a gift. When I was standing there looking at the options this older Asian woman asked me if I could help her find an mp3 player that she could buy for her daughter. It was around Christmas. I told her that I didn't work there and she said oh. Well you young guys know everything about these anyway my mother and I laughed and I changed her mind from getting a no name like 2 gig mp3 player to getting an actual ipod and I think I saved one kid from being kind of disappointed on Christmas. I was walking from the pharmacy in the back of the store towards the front. An old guy stops and asks where do you stock the mouthwash. I was about to say I don't work here. Then I figured. It's Walgreens. It's like 7 short aisles. I could find mouthwash. Come with me. We found the mouthwash. I'm also awesome helping old ladies get products off the top shelf. So I'm trying on a pair of jeans at Hollister and it's a big sale so it's a crowded. Smelly. Teenage angst mess in the place. I exit the changing room and there's a ton of people waiting. And it's not a big changing room so it's super crowded. Worker is Mia so I go over to the shelf thing they put the clothes on you don't want and it's a mess. The thing was stacked high with clothes. Crap was falling off onto the floor and everywhere and I feel bad so I attempt tidy a bit but it's too far gone and not my job so I just fold the jeans I don't want and go to leave the dressing room when a grade. A dirt bag mother appears with her mini me carrying 10 plus jeans. This woman starts going on and on about how her daughter isn't a 2 or a 4, and why don't they make a size 3, and how come these jeans are ripped. This woman isn't giving me a chance to breathe but I clearly know she has mistaken me for an employee. I am a young tan somewhat surfer why. I just let her rant not really listening to her waiting to explain myself when she starts picking me apart. 
She starts saying they should hire workers who have brains that know how to actually help customers and don't just stand there to look pretty. She finally gives me a chance to speak but instead of telling her I don't work there I pretended I was super offended and said I quit her daughter looked all embarrassed and people were watching and you could tell she looked kind of bad so she started to apologize and I was just like no really I quit you can work here and you won't have to worry about looking pretty and Jay just walked away. Mine isn't exactly working in the traditional sense. Once while I was in college I was meeting a friend for lunch at Chipotle after class. Because of the way you order at Chipotle I figured it would be better to just wait outside for him to get there. His class ended up running a little long so I was just standing outside for a good 15 or 20 minutes. Eventually this urban looking fellow comes up to me from the bus stop across the street and asks, Hey man. You got any bags I can get off you at first I thought that was a strange question. Then I processed that he was looking for drugs. I just said sorry man. I can't help you and he went on his way. That was a strange experience to say the least. I had the opposite. One company. Three offices in various parts of the country. For a client event we were bussed out to a countryside retreat so that we could act as hosts. Mostly we'd be there to set things up. Stop them getting drunk and make sure they didn't run off with the silverware. As the only person going from my office, I get there 3 hours before the event is due to start and wander into the room we booked, which was filled with cardboard boxes and props being set up. I'm wearing my pre-event let's hang some decorations outfit and of course I ask where they want me to start. Someone comes over to me using with enthusiasm but guiding me to the door. She tells me all about dinner later on, about the hotel we're at, how nice it would be to take a long walk in the grounds or maybe hang out in the lounge for a few hours. I'm a little confused because they seem to be trying to get rid of me and I keep going yeah, but surely there's loads of work I can help with. It's only 10 minutes later when I'm clearly not leaving. She asks if I've brought a plus one. She thinks I'm a stray, early, jogging bottom clad client. Many years ago I worked as a day custodian at Disneyland, and it was red shirt day, which is was the unofficial gay day at the park. There was this poor guy there with his two little girls, and he had on a white, short sleeve button up shirt, and very light colored shorts, making him look like one of the day custodial staff. Day custodians wear white so that they'll be very visible in case any guest has questions. Well this guy was getting stopped and questioned left and right. I was working main street that day and I must have seen him get stopped 10 or 12 times in one pass up the street. I felt so bad for the guy that I took him to the main saint. Disney store and used my guest help card to get him a new shirt so he wouldn't get hassled. He bought a red Mickey shirt. I don't think he'd realized what the shirts meant on that particular day, but he seemed very happy with his purchase so I just smiled and told him to enjoy his day. Might not be super relevant, but I've been mistaken as a student at every school I've visited as an education major. I even got written up by a hall monitor for being out of class without permission and sent to the principal's office. Cockies. Red shirt. Target. Cockies. Red shirt. State Farm. Whoa calm down there Jake from State Farm. That last time I went to visit my grandmother at her retirement home. She told me you already came and cleaned the kitchen but you forgot my laundry. She has dementia and doesn't form new memories. She thinks I'm 12 still. I am 27, comma. This stuff was supposed to make me giggle, but instead I'm sitting here praying my body goes before my mind. I'm a bit of a computer whisperer. Think, doctor, house, but with Dells instead of dudes. I'm getting rung up at the clothing store one day when the clerk starts button mashing. I ask him what's up and he said the thing was being difficult. I take a quick look at the box and notice the ethernet cable is unplugged and someone tripped over it. Pulling it away from the clusterfuck it was plugged into. I climb underneath the table and I'm in the process of threading it back up to the box when a manager comes over and says oh thank god you're here. One of the computers in the back won't start up. Once I get rung up I drop my bag in the car and head to the manager's office. Fix that PC. Field a couple more questions on my way out from various employees. And as I'm going to leave, a guy goes hey can we get your card. Corporate IT never responds to our emails. I say I'm not corporate IT and the look on the guy's face was priceless. And this was the start of the massive credit card theft that has been occurring in retail. This is not mine but a Peruvian kid I know. 
He was out at one of the local Indian restaurants for a curry and when he went up to go to the toilet a guy grabbed him and tried to give him his order. He wasn't wearing anything remotely like the waiting staff. The guy had just seen a brown person and assumed he worked there. Walked into the grocery store one day after my retail job. Still in uniform. Old woman walks straight up to me at the entrance and begins screaming where is the flower you have on sale. The other girl sent her me down here and you don't have IT. This is false advertising I stare back at her and say I do not work here but looks like the big display of flower is right behind you. I was on break from my mall retail job where we had to wear black dress slacks and a white button down shirt aka general weight staff retail dress code. I went into the mall's Nordstrom to do some window shopping until my break was over. Some older lady, I'd guess around 65-70, came up to me asking some question. I kind of laughed and explained that I didn't work there. She looked very confused and insisted I did as I was wearing the general retail dress code outfit. I pointed out that I was carrying around my purse, and if I did work there I wouldn't be perusing the store with my purse while on the clock. She followed me around for a bit insisting I worked at the store. I finally got fed up and told her off, which as a person working retail we never get to do. She was shocked and said she was going to report me to management. I told her to go ahead and walked off. It felt good. My buds and I had just landed, hadn't changed out of our flight suits yet, when military pilots, as we walked through the hotel to get to our rooms, we accidentally passed the a wedding party. A pair of beautiful women stopped us and asked if we were the strippers. My buddy said, completely deadpan, we can be. During our lunch, a co-worker and I went into Sephora to check out some things. We both work at cosmetic counters in a department store, and I was still wearing my uniform green apron. Looks nothing like Sephora's smock. I was trying on a lipstick when I noticed this older woman giving me the stink eye. I thought nothing of it and go find my co-worker. As I passed by this lady, I heard her mutter they should fire your ass under her breath. Alright, I thought that was odd. I told my co-worker what was going on and that I was suspicious that the woman thought I worked there. We watched the woman get in line, looking pee and not holding any merchandise. Figured she was trying to complain about me. I ignore it and start trying on another product when the woman walks by and dramatically says oh there she goes again I almost lost it. I had no idea what this woman's issue was since she never actually approached me and asked for help. I firmly told her I didn't work there. Showed her my badge with my store's name on it, and all she did was laugh like she didn't believe me and walked away. Some people, man. I worked a job at Sears when I was in high school. We only had one car so my mom let me drop her off at work at Kroger and pick her back up at night after her shift. I arrived 20 minutes before the end of my mom's shift as cashier so I was just wandering down the frozen food aisle still dressed in my work clothes when this little old lady approached me looking for frozen pot pies. I didn't have the heart to tell her that I didn't work there so I just found her the pot pies and placed them in her cart then she proceeded to ask me where a bunch of other stuff was. I eventually had pretty much become this lady's personal shopper because most of what she wanted was on the top shelves and she couldn't reach. When she got to check out she took my mom's lane and she goes that young man that works here is a very kind man and a very hard worker you should give him a raise and my mom looked very confused she said mom there aren't any men working this. Evening there are only the ladies left to close up the store then I came walking up with a frozen pizza, tombstone of course, and the little old lady said this is the young man my mom chuckled and said that's my son and he doesn't even work here. And then my mom winked at me and of course the whole ride home talked about how she raised me well and blah blah blah. Overly proud mom stuff. My granddad essentially becomes a Home Depot employee every time he is in the store. He gives every customer individual attention and they even come back to him to ask more questions. But when the employees confront him he pretty much tells them to go away. He knows what he's doing. I was once walking around a store and this lady asked me where the frozen juice was. I was 12 at the time. I said, I am 12 years old. She didn't believe me and thought I was trying to get out of working. So I just took her to the cereal aisle and ran away. I didn't know frozen juice was a thing. So I was at Walmart once looking for a simple combination lock but couldn't find one. There's this guy in the typical blue Walmart polo messing with the stock of headphones. And I figure I should ask him to help me find the lock. 
I say, do you work here? He gives me a terrified look and replies with, number. I realized he had a pair of pliers and was stealing headphones. We gave each other a blank stare for a couple seconds and I proceeded to find the lock a couple aisles down. Students of Reddit, what was the most awkward time you saw a teacher outside of school? Bumped into an old teacher at the urinal while being completely intoxicated at a bar. Open up to him about how much his class meant to me. The class was gym. That's my favorite so far. I was out of class sick for the day back in 4th grade. My mom had to go to the store for something, but didn't want to leave me home alone. So I went with her, despite my 101 F fever. We're at checkout and I see my teacher, and he's seen me, panicking. I told him that I'm sick and not playing hooky. He laughed and said he was. Your teacher sounds awesome. My mother once told me the story of how, when she was in high school in England in the 1970s, she saw her teacher in a pub toilet, drunk, slumped against the wall. My mother was around 15 at the time and shouldn't have been drinking in a pub on a Saturday night. The teacher recognized her and drunkenly said I won't say anything if you don't. My sister was in a fender bender right after getting her license. The guy who rear-ended her was her driving teacher. I mistook the meaning of this sentence. I saw my married middle school science teacher at a gay bar with a guy who certainly wasn't his wife. How else are you supposed to learn fashion? Found out he lived in my neighborhood when his dog bit me and I had to get stitches. Mr. Feeney's dog's a bee. I'm the teacher, not awkward but a WTF moment for me. Went to the pub last night and was served by an old student. Jesus I feel old. My cousin is a teacher and she bartends in the summer for extra money. She has served some of her old students now. Almost worse, I'd think. Not a student, but the parent of one. My daughter was clothes shopping at the mall, and she didn't notice at first that the woman fitting her at Victoria's Secret was her science teacher. I think I've seen this movie. I was babysitting for one of the high school teachers probably when I was in 10th or 11th grade. Him and his wife get home and I call my dad to come pick me up and I was just hanging out in the kitchen waiting for him, chatting with the wife about the kids. Then all these cars start pulling up and people flood into the house with cases of beer, bottles of booze. It was all teachers from the high school that taught me or were currently teaching me. They were all so drunk and would like sober up when they saw me and try to make awkward conversation for a few minutes. Apparently the teacher I was babysitting for offered up his house for the after party of whatever they did that night. I think it was more awkward for them than it was for me. I especially remember my French teacher who was such a buttoned up and serious middle aged lady literally stumbling into the house giggling. Hair all a mess. Plastered. She started telling me how well I did on a presentation I had earlier that week and how happy I'd be when I got my grade back. The thing that got me the most was when my dad finally got there and I'm walking to the car a few of them were in the garage smoking cigs and tried to hide them when I walked by. Those were jazz cigarettes. Saw my English teacher sharp lifting underwear from Primark. It's never awkward for me, but one of my favorite times it was awkward for them was at a local music festival. This was one of those 3 day weekend things where everyone is enjoying some sort of mind altering experience or another. I ran into a group of students who were just blazed, tripping on something, I mean barely functional. I let them try to play it off for a while before I showed mercy and moved on. They tried so hard to seem sober. Freaking hilarious. If I was a teacher this would be my goal. I worked at a local Target store after high school. My band instructor came in and bought a pack of condoms and came through my checkout. He chatted me up for a bit and it was weird. Since band went on trips for parades and festivals, his family came with us a lot. His wife was friendly, but his kids were mostly terrible. Glad he was using protection. Previous high school teacher, embarrassed and drunk when his wife was throwing up all over me as I was forcibly removing her from the bar I worked at for dancing naked on a table. I delivered food to a brewery for an old history teacher. She's 5 years older and clearly drunk. She got all close up on me but gave me a $10 tip so it was coo. Coo, coo. When I was in 4th grade, after my parents divorced, my aunt came to live with us for a while. One night I was watching TV and procrastinating doing my homework. There was a knock at the door and it was my teacher Mr. L. 
I was so shocked that I blurted out I'm just about to start my homework. I swear he laughed and said no. Machine press. We're here for your aunt. Is she ready? That's when I noticed he was with his wife and some man who was to be my aunt's date for the evening. The four of them were going to a concert or something. I felt pretty stupid about it. Especially because he liked to bring it later and laugh about the idea that he would come by students' houses and check on their homework progress. I had an English teacher in high school. Really wacky guy. You either loved him or hated him. And basically if you were failing in his class and not doing anything about it. He would show up to your house and talk to your parents. A lot less students failed. The local festival. Under a tent with half naked singer rubbing her tea on him while he looked uncomfortable. But smirking. 17. Senior year. Snuck into a 21 and up bar with some friends that were not from my school. Get to bar and wait to order drink. Bartender is current art teacher. Something she likes to do on weekends I assumed. We stare at each other for 2 seconds then she asks what'll it be for all of us. Order gin and tonic. She serves me drink. And we go about our night. School was the same. So 10 stroke 10 would drink with art teacher again. Gin and tonic was good too. Look. You can either get the frick out. Or you can order a drink. I don't care which. But you're holding up the line. Also. Your report on Monet is due Monday. No excuses. I saw my 4th grade teacher who hated me, absolutely hammered at a restaurant. She was pretty embarrassed about it, but never brought it up to me. I smoke a lot in the treehouse at my parents house. One summer after college I looked out the door as I was taking a fat bong rip and made eye contact with my old high school English teacher walking her dog. Gave her a casual head nod and slowly closed the door. That is the best mental image. When I was in high school, I ran into my middle school history teacher at the movies. He was with his boyfriend, who happened to be my high school art teacher. It had long been rumored that they were gay together and this confirmed it. They tried to act as if they had simply bumped into one another there. Super awkward. When I was in grade 10, I had a crush on my English teacher, whose support incidentally inspired me to write. My friend's sister was a horseback rider and we went to the stable one day to pick her up. As we were walking through, we saw my teacher, who was washing the underside of her horse. Its horse bits were fully engorged. She saw me, smiled widely, and said hello. I stuttered hello back. I'm still not sure how to mentally categorize that event, and sometimes wonder if it was just a dream. Its horse bits were fully engorged, oh my how vivid. Second grade teacher was missing for a few days. We had a substitute. I didn't think anything of it until his mugshot popped up on the local news one night and they said he had abused a bunch of kids in the class above me. But my mom was like, well now you know. And knowing is half the battle. I had a college professor who was a massive dong. He would mark down your grade for asking questions if he thought the question was dumb. One student got up and left in the middle of class and apparently walked directly to advising to change majors. One day he drove past us in a restaurant parking lot and he stopped to have a perfectly pleasant and normal chat as if he wasn't crazy. Read that as had a massive dong and was displeased with the story. The guy who's going to be a teacher, and sometimes teaches us, supervised by a teacher. We talked to our trainee teacher at a party who was completely drunk and shared a bottle of alcohol with us. Later, we ate scrambled eggs at 4am and he slept on the couch. The walk of shame the next day was quite embarrassing for him. Yeah, if his college found out about that I bet he's not going to be a teacher. When I was stripping my senior year of HS and my history homeroom teacher came in, once a week. My guidance counselor was also our exterminator. He came by to do his 6 month spray right after my parents called him to tell him they wanted to send me to military school. Skipped school to go to a concert. A teacher who apparently did the same was also at said show. As long as neither of us breathed a word against the other it was our secret. My old ceramics teacher from high school used to rip on me all the time for being stoned in art class. I eventually cleaned up and joined the military, and I was home for leave and driving on the highway when I see this goofy cube car coming up ahead of me with all these familiar bumper stickers about art and loving earth. I go to pull up next to him, and he was smoking a bowl while driving on the highway. I gave him a wave once he noticed me, but I don't think he recognized me and he pulled off. A few years later, 
I saw he and his wife at Wakarosa and we shared a bowl together and I joked about the time I caught him smoking on his drive home and he just goes. I thought that was you. But I figured you'd be in prison so I just discounted it. My GF met her teacher in holidays. He was having his honeymoon and had the hotel room directly above the room of my GF. He wasn't too pleased when he noticed that. Played in a punk rock band and had a show an hour and a half away. My chemistry teacher lived in the same neighborhood as the guy who drove the van. And his wife was their band director at school. We get about 15 minutes from home on our way back. And we recognize my teacher's car in front of us. Swerving all over the road. Rumble strips. Oncoming traffic. You name it. Guy was wasted. I do not approve. Of course. Monday was very awkward. Though he had no idea. This is going back almost 10 years. When I was a sophomore I ran into my math teacher at a Spencer's. It was awkward because she had an adult toy that had to have been almost 2 foot. She was a tiny lady. I felt bad for her vagina. Quite possibly a gag gift for someone. When I was in high school I went to my friend's house to smoke some weed. We went to the shed in his backyard and we walked in on his dad and our physics teacher smoking a bowl. So we stayed and smoked their weed instead of ours. Dude sharing is caring. That's a great story. When I was 18 I went on a stag do of my mate's older brother and the best man was an old teacher of mine. Top bloke and he bought me a lap dance at one point. Wasn't actually awkward now I write it out. This is the most British comment I've ever read. A few years ago, when I was still in high school, my mom and I went to the local swimming pool. When we were changing our clothes, I saw my math teacher, approx 45 years old, in the dressing room as well helping her children dress themselves and then herself. My math class has always been awkward thereafter, as I could not unsee her hanging breasts anymore. Up, uh, I am a teacher and recently joined the gym. I was changing one day and made eye contact with a young woman walking by me. A few days later I saw some kids at school looking at a schedule for the gym. I told them I go there too and they said yeah. I saw you in the change room greet. A place where I was topless. There is this little vacation town about 20 minutes away from where I grew up. It's fun to hang out there in the summer because of all the shops and lakeshore festivities. Live music in the streets, etc. I had just graduated 8th grade and my friends and I were walking around the streets one summer evening. We saw our 7th grade English teacher and some of his friends walking toward us. Hey mister. Whistler. Fake name. He proceeded to stop mid stride and freeze. He stayed that way for a few seconds with his eyes wide and then looked around and went and hid behind a tree. Just peeking out at us every few seconds. We were cracking up laughing and walked over to him like WTF are you doing? He says I may have done drugs and you shouldn't see me like this. He was probably in his mid 20s at the time. He looked paranoid as all heck and his friends were in tears from laughing so hard. It was great. Philosopher teacher. Community college. Dude totally opened my eyes. Then tried to open my pants. Came back after a few years after I took his class. We had some lunch and caught up. He kept telling me the ultimate journey was to expose ourselves. To be vulnerable. He kept saying he was safe and that I could expose with him in his apartment if I wanted to. I didn't. Shame. Or some teacher. Sounds like Mr. Jefferson from Life is Strange. In high school I was the student director of our broadcasting class. So the teacher had my number. She but dialed me 4 years after graduation. She realized she did when she heard my voice in her pocket and then engaged me in an awkward how ya been conversation. Saw the teacher in Ann Summers the other day. A sex toy shop in the UK. That also sells underwear. Ditched school to go to McDonald's to find my vice principal had left school for a cigarette. Who had told everyone he'd quit. This was 10 years ago, but mutually drunk and high at a Bob Dylan concert. I am currently her teacher, but this happened when I was 19 or just out of high school. Was out at the club with a few friends, Canada, and we ran into some girls from high school. The night was fairly tame, and about an hour later I ran into a teacher coach from our school. He coached me in basketball so I met his wife and kids and he was a pretty legit guy. Probably around 30-35 yo. After midnight when everyone was feeling good we went into the dance floor and saw this teacher making out with one of our female friends. 
Probably not too awkward for him if he knew we were all there, but it was definitely awkward for us. What's the most awkward thing that's happened at a sleepover? About 11 years ago, sleepover with girls and boys. All lights are out for about 10 minutes. We have all settled down and gotten silent for sleeping. Then we hear a grown male voice clearly enunciate the word what. Now, let me be clear. This was not a child's voice. This was like hearing James Earl Jones say what. There was about a 10 second silence and then one of the girls says who said that. Silence. Then one of the boys starts laughing uncontrollably. We turn the lights on and he is laughing so hard that he's crying. Here we are all freaking out about some strange man in our room while we sleep and he's pee himself laughing. He finally calms down enough to tell us that it wasn't a person who asked what. He farted the word. His fart sounded exactly like the word what. We all cracked up. To this day everyone from that party still answers phone calls from each other with what. When I was 6 I watched Jurassic Park at a friend's house one night. Got so scared I demanded my mom to come pick me up and take me home. So I said I was sick. My mother did not believe me. So I crapped my pants in my friend's living room on accident so she would have to come get me. I didn't really go over to my friend's house that much after that. Fear can make a child crazy. Especially fear of velociraptors. Our entire friend group and my poor friend Baxter. That seems like a fun name. Watched as my science teacher got a BJ from Baxter's single mom in a hot tub from the window. We were 13. There are some things you can't unsee. Your mom sure does care about your schoolin', son. Does a boy scout trip count? Well if it does here it goes. I was in BS in an inner city area. The older kids were dongs. Well my first weekend trip my dad loaded me up on goodies to share. I fell asleep and the older kids raided my bag and took just about everything. So it sucked but whatever. I go home and tell my dad and he was pee but really composed. Which was odd for my Irish longshoreman dad. So next month is my next trip and my dad made a big batch of brownies but told me not to eat any or share with my friends. He told me leave them in my bag lime I did last time. Sure enough I woke up and they were gone. And three kids were shitting themselves like crazy. Yup my pop six lacks the brownies. He showed up that same morning to the campsite with another goodie bag for me to share. Never had my bag raided again. Your dad is awesome. I was 10 I think. And it was the first time I stayed over at this kid's house. Well we go to sleep at like 2 or 3 am and all seemed well. Then suddenly his drunk grandfather charges in the room and gets the poor kid in a headlock and drags him to the floor. Oh. And he was naked. I guess he suffered from PTSD or something. I kind of ignored the whole event while it was happening. And did not acknowledge it the next morning. I did not go back again. I was out camping with a neighbor friend of mine when we were 14. I woke up hearing the shuffle of her sleeping bag. I asked her what she was doing and without breaking a stride she said that she was warming herself up. Then I turned on the lamp and found her on top of her bag, naked and masturbating. She immediately stopped and pulled her sleeping bag up over herself and she turned out the lamp. We sat there in silence for about 3 minutes. Then I said you can finish if you wanna. No, you ruined it. We didn't speak much the rest of the trip. You gave her the opportunity to finish, at least. I once slept over at a friend's house. He was a bit older than me. This difference was where he had discovered masturbation, whereas I had not. Anyway, I heard his bed furiously rocking back and forth. I asked him what he was doing. He said he was doing push-ups. It was dark so I took him for his word. So then I asked if I could do push-ups with him. Years later it all dawned on me. You had no reason to doubt the man was getting swill in the middle of the night. In about grade 7, I had a sleepover with a few friends. One of them started crying when we started watching The Simpsons because he wasn't allowed to watch it at home. We couldn't calm him down for almost an hour. Real life Rod Todd. Back when I used to pee the bed in 3rd grade, I fell asleep in my friend's bed during a sleepover at his house. I pee the bed. It, it was awkward, and I never stayed the night at his house again. But what was most awkward was that when I woke up, he was sitting in a chair staring at me, waiting for me to wake up. C you know what you did. Finally invited to a sleepover at a popular girl's house. Started my period and bled all over my PJs, which I borrowed from her, and her sheets. 
The day after the sleepover, my friend wouldn't let me leave no matter what I did. Around 6pm his dad finally said I should probably go home. Friend burst into tears, threw himself to the floor and was begging his dad to make me stay. There's nothing worse than being a kid at the house the next day wanting so 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 badly to go home. When I was 12 my friend Peter had a disco themed birthday party. No, I don't know why. At his house, the party being on a Friday, we all stayed the night. Being preteen boys with limitless cola, we ended up staying up all night and decided to watch the sunrise on his back deck. As we're looking at the majestic, slowly lightening sky, our peaceful moment is shattered by a shrill, screaming voice. Looking to the source of the sound we see his fat, topless, 50 plus year old neighbor lady yelling through her kitchen window that we're degenerate perverts. She was under the impression we were all staring at her. Once the yelling started we couldn't really help it, and that horrible image will be forever burned into my mind. I'm 29 now. Of course she thought that. You can't handle these lumps. Me and my friend slept in his mom's bedroom on the floor because she liked company since her husband passed away a few weeks before. Apparently when my mom came to pick me up the next day my friend's mom said I climbed into bed with her. I had no idea. Classic case of sleepwalking. Friend's mom walked downstairs to find 8 6th grade boys huddled around the TV watching pee. We instantly pretended to be asleep, and nothing was ever said after that. I still think of it every time I see her. I'm imagining you all just falling over like those narcoleptic goats, with the pee still playing in the background. Took the most wholesomely fulfilling crap in my friend's bathroom, and ended up flooding the bathroom at 2am. The parents had to clean up the entire mess. It was an awkward breakfast the next morning. Five people in one room and their sleeping bags about to sleep and all I hear is a very slow fapping noise. We didn't find out who it was in the morning. I was about 10, sleeping over with a group of pals, including my buddy's little brother who was around 6. We finished up a few rousing games of Donkey Kong 64 and Hydro Thunder and all went to bed. Woke up to find the little brother standing ominously above me, but us naked except for a pair of Christmas themed tube socks on his hands and arms, and peeing into my half open sleeping bag. No more sleepovers at Ryan's house. Guess you played two different kinds of Hydro Thunder that night. Not really a sleepover, I was 23 at the time and drove to California to stay on a buddy's couch. I drank a bunch of beer after the long drive and passed out, woke up having pee myself on his couch. It is about 5am. I grab a towel and lay on it on the couch, resigning myself to being the guy who pee on the couch for the duration of my stay. By some miracle the towel absorbed most of it, him and his roommates woke up around 9am, and nobody knew a thing. Edit, except his cat. His cat knew. Please tell me his cat was not named Tao. Camping in the backyard with some friends when I had to pee super bad. I couldn't find the zipper to the tent to get out and I was about to burst. So I ended up trying to pee though the mesh window. I don't know why. Well, peeing through mesh doesn't work very well. Especially with terrible 9 year old aim and I ended up laying a pretty thick layer of atomized urine all over everyone else in the tent. In the morning it turns out one of my other friends was awake pretending to be asleep and saw the whole thing and told everyone it was me who peed all over everything in the tent. Dude was awake while he was getting pee all over him and said nothing. What the frick man. Needless to say I was not invited to another sleepover for quite a while. When I was about 7 or 8, me and a few friends were sleeping in a tent in my best friend neighbor's front yard. His dad was a bit of an alcoholic. Quite similar to Randy Marsh actually. Anyways, his dad comes home from the bar, plastered, bursts into the tent and wakes us all up, saying we should all go up to the elementary school across the street. We go with him, the whole time acting like spies, avoiding all the lights, all under his drunk ass directions. We get to the playground, and he decides he wants to challenge all of us to a foot race. So we all line up, he yells go and we all take off. Surprisingly, he kept up with us almost all the way to the finish line, before he busted his ass, fell flat on his face, on concrete. He also landed awkwardly on his arm, breaking his wrist. Was awkward at the time, but looking back on it 20 years later, it's quite hilarious. I like this story because it's a drunk dad that isn't doing some family ruining fricked up crap, just having a good time breaking wrists etc. 
Mine are all things that I did. When I was in grade 1, I had a sleepover with my old best friend and her new best friend. I was jealous and felt left out the whole time. That night I wet the bed and we never hung out again. When I was younger, I used to puke if I ate eggs, even scrambled, and my friend's dad made eggs. I was trying to be polite and eat them but I couldn't keep them down and ran to the bathroom right off the dining room to throw up his nice breakfast. Third one, and the most mortifying. I was at a friend's house and got my period. I was wearing a thong and she didn't have any tampons, just huge pads. So I tried to make it work anyway. The next day we were sitting on the computer and there were only seats for two of us. So I sat on the one girl's lap. After a while I got up and realized I bled through my jeans and all over her leg. She laughed her ass off. Thankfully, instead of being disgusted, her mom had me sit on a towel when she drove me home. I was sleeping over at my cousin's house. We stayed up and snuck out into the living room to watch Cinemax. It was after midnight and back in those days that was when all the titty flicks came on. One came on that my cousin was really into. He started touching his raging erection in his pajama pants and then he let out a blood curdling scream. Somehow he ruptured a vein or something in his peen. We had to go wake up his mom. She looked at it and decided we had to go to the emergency room. Our whole family still makes fun of him for that until this day when we get together. Told my friend I hadn't changed my underwear in over a week. I learned a lot at sleepover, like change your underwear frequently. One time at a sleepover I left my dirty skid marked underwear in my friend's room. And when she asked everyone whose it was I had to lie. I learned that wearing dirty skid marked underwear was not normal at that sleepover. I was a gross child. My friend's dog woke me up with his tongue in my mouth. One time I was over at a friend's house for his 11th birthday. It was myself, the birthday boy, and three other guys. We all slept in our sleeping bags in the basement. At around 5am, we all awake to find Jake yelling at the birthday boy Derek. The reason? Derek thought it was funny to take a pee on Jake's face while he was sleeping, and Jake freaked out. Jake walked out after right after that, while the rest of us stayed up and called our parents around 7. I went home around 8, and in that time, Derek was still trying to play it off as funny. But Derek lost 4 friends that night. It's his party he can pee where he wants to. My friend sitting next to me saw a kid shove a lego axe up his butt in the middle of the night while he thought my friend was asleep. I was in 4th grade and sleeping over at my best friend's house. I wet his bed and then clogged their toilet with a massive dump. I didn't know what to do so I shut the lid and ran into their garage to hide. 13 or 14 years old. All night RPG session. Pen and paper. With my buddies in my friend's basement. His awesome and very traditionally Chinese mom brings us course after course of food throughout the evening as I vainly try to GM an adventure where my friends are more interested in creating in-game simulations of being drunk. GURPS had a skill for that, like everything else, than in actually playing the game. The night wears on and we finally pass out with dawn quickly approaching. Shortly afterward I wake up with a start. My stomach didn't like the awesome Chinese food as much as the rest of me did. Jump up off the basement floor and bolt for the bathroom, only I'm really tall and have a problem with passing out when I get up too quickly. Black out in the doorway and fall hard. Wake up a moment later with my friends standing over me. That's when it hits me. That looming feeling of dread when you realize that you had just crap your pants in front of a room full of your peers. Is this real or am I dreaming? These terror filled thoughts are interrupted by a renewed gurgling in my stomach. Apparently it is all too real. I claw my way into the bathroom and slam the door shut on my startled friends. I pull my pants down and unleash a foul kind of heck in the toilet even as crap continues to soak into my ill-fitting jeans. This happened in the 90s. But wait, there's more. Suddenly I need to vomit because this delicious food apparently cannot leave my body fast enough. I do the only rational thing that can be done and start puking into the garbage can as I continue to add to the mountain of poop underneath me. Apparently I had offended some vengeful deity that day because, obviously, the basket is wicker. So there I am, pooping everything that can be pooped as I vomit into a garbage can that is, at best, straining it. The floor is covered in vomit, my pants are full of crap. And that's the day that my social anxiety started. Welcome to the next decade of your life, kid.
What was the most awkward thing you witnessed in a school classroom? NSFW. Girl fell while sitting at a desk in math class. Person beside me starts laughing. The look on his face when it became obvious she was having a seizure was that of pure terror and regret. God dang this same thing happened to me. She was my good friend though so we had a laugh about it afterward. Then next week she sort of slumped over in her desk. I thought she was falling asleep so I jokingly whispered to her. Hey, don't have another seizure she had another seizure. My professor for a computer science class had his phone go off during a lecture one day. He's a pretty chill old man. So everyone starts giggling and some people are yelling at him to answer it. He looks at his phone and says, Oh no I'm not answering. My brother died today and I have to make funeral arrangements. I'll call back later. And then he moved on with his lecture. I've never seen a room so awkwardly quiet and sad. That dedication though. Shortly after the Columbine shooting, I was called into the office and a guidance counselor tried very awkwardly to have a conversation with me about not mimicking the incident. I was a model student with no disciplinary issues or any indication of a troubled family life. I just didn't have any friends and spent my free time in the library. When I asked why I got singled out, she looked awkwardly at her desk and said I could go. We had a mentally challenged kid who stood up in the middle of lunch and threw his tray of food against the wall and ran out of the room screaming. The assistant principal walked past my table saying I guess he didn't like the soup. Your assistant principal is hilarious. When I was in the 6th grade, one of my classmates took off his prosthetic leg and tried to hit the teacher with it. I went to school with a kid who had a prosthetic leg who would constantly pick fights with people and then take it off and try to use it as a weapon. One particular time this dude just grabbed it, yanked it out of his hands and tossed it over a wall. Dude looked so bummed hopping around the fence to go get it. I don't think he tried doing it again. My high school economics class. A girl was called to the office with her things rather suddenly. About 2 minutes later she comes bursting into the room and yells. My dad just died. The teacher immediately went to her to try and console her as she was justifiably distressed. Everyone in the room was in complete shock. She then yelled at the teacher to get off of her and threw her arm back and started hysterically darting around the room. Eventually her family member came to the room and got her. We could hear her sobbing down the hall. It was the craziest most heart wrenching thing I had seen in a class. The second most awkward thing involved the same girl about a year earlier. She nearly tried to fight our English lit teacher while he was dressed in a formal kilt and jacket. I don't remember why. She had to be escorted out by security. My 30 year old teacher admitted she was a virgin. To a class of high school sophomores. That didn't end well. Kid in my sophomore math class would massage rub his girlfriend's bare feet for most of class. Every day. That girl was the happiest person in the entire school. This one time in third grade the boy next to me went under his desk and took his clothes off because he wanted to be invisible. It only works if you aren't looking at him. During the lunch break, this guy who was eating a sandwich was on the verge of sneezing. So he finally sneezes and I see the piece of sandwich flying. I'm not kidding, into the mouth of my classmate who was busy laughing. His confused expression was priceless. We had one of those strange quiet kids at school that everyone would verbally abuse. One day he showed up with four long scratch marks on the side of his face. These were pretty raw and were scabbing up. Kids were making fun of him. Hey, have a rough date last night hey. You're supposed to jack off your dong, not your head. This went on for a couple of days. Then we find out the kid had taken a butcher knife to his piano teacher during a lesson and chopped the heck out of her. They found her body on the floor of the kitchen, nude, mutilated, and a bottle of wine and two wine glasses on the counter. He came to school for two days afterwards while she lay there on the floor rotting. She had been sy abusing him for weeks and he finally snapped. Poor kid. He got off on self defense and he and his family went underground after that. Name change and everything. There was a kid in my school who was kind of problematic. One day, during a math test, he grabbed the test papers, went to the corner of the classroom and peed on them. Sorry teacher, I can't finish the test, there's pee on it. Middle school chemistry class, the ceiling vent fan had not been used since at least the previous spring term. Pigeons had nested in it unbeknownst to the teacher, fan used during a demonstration. 
Pandemonium reigned that day. Blood and feathers reigned that day. That's metal as frick. A kid in my kindergarten class whipped out his penis once for show and tell. He said it hides when he's cold, that's the only sentence he got out before one of the teacher was able to get to him and pull up his pants. The girls in the class asked what it was for, and the teachers didn't know what to answer except for snack break and then back to show and tell. In high school I reached down for a binder that was in my backpack on the floor. I reached down to grab it, and when I positioned myself back upright in my chair, I ended up scooping the teacher's boobs, who was walking down the aisle, with my head. We just kinda looked at each other in fear and no words came out of either of our mouths. Nobody else saw it or at least made a point to say that they saw it. I like to think it was just our little uncomfortable secret. Some kid had pulled his hard on out during a movie to impress us, not his girlfriend. I once watched a kid stand on top of his desk then run around the room crying after the teacher asked him to stop. This was in high school. I don't know if this is awkward or more uncomfortably sad. When I was in middle school, pretty tight knit, a kid had died on Saturday I had a couple classes with him but didn't know him that well. Well on Monday my second class of the day had a sub and the kid who died happened to have been in that class. I guess no one clued the sub in, because she called his name during attendance. It was deafeningly silent and felt like the air was slowly being sucked out of the room. After a second or two she called his name again and several people burst into sobs and ran from the room. Then I heard someone whisper he died. Another teacher I had was absent that day too. I think he had some prior engagement as opposed to randomly taking a sick day, and the next day when he came back, the boy that died was also in this class. He was apologizing profusely for not being there for us and everything. At some point during his little speech he started crying and slammed his fist down on his desk. It was so sad, he truly felt awful for not being there that day. I was in the 9th grade, and there was a girl in my classroom who broke both of her arms. So she had them in the cast that held her arms above her waist. Now this girl wasn't the most popular and she was best friends with another girl who was equally awkward as she was. I will never forget when the best friend raised her hand to get the attention of the teacher. The teacher called on the best friend, and she asked if she and her broken armed friend could use the restroom together. And the teacher asks why would you need to go together? She replies just like this I have to unzip and take off her pants. Looking back, I understand now that she just wanted to help her friend use the restroom. But imagine being in 9th grade and you hear this. Everyone in the classroom was silent. Then one kid started laughing. Then everyone started laughing. And that is how the lesbian rumors started about the two. High school can be a B. What a good friend though. A friend of mine was bragging about how he could sleep with any of the girls in the class. My other friend decided to put his boast to the test by asking all girls at once. Loudly. The one guy that slept through every class raised his hand. 11th grade. Shitty alternative school. One of the scummy kids was a notorious cigarette bum. They gave us smoke breaks at school to cut down on kids leaving campus. One day, he asked to bum a cigarette from someone. And they said, eat a dead fly off the windowsill and I'll give you a cigarette. He thought about it for a minute, and someone else offered to give him a cigarette for every fly he ate. This turned into eating all 24 of the available dead flies for 24 cigarettes. He ate them one at a time, and collected a cigarette for each. The next day, he tried again, but there weren't any flies to eat. The following day, he brought his own flies in. That kid was fricked up. This really weird nerdy boy asked the prettiest girl to homecoming with this crazy big sign right in front of the entire class, but she already had a date. Don't let your dreams be dreams I guess. I was in the first day of a pay class with a classically intense coach. He bounced students out of the first week with ease. This one kid didn't follow his instruction so he told him to get out. The kid remains silent and doesn't budge. The teacher comes up and starts yelling at him to leave. The kid walks up in his face and doesn't move. The entire class is watching just wondering if this is how we all die. Eventually he walked out but it was uncomfortable as frick. Plot twist. Kid was deaf. I was about 12 when this happened. I'm from Canada. So translate this to whatever grade it is for you. 
We were in music class and some guy got a boner because he just started having them and have them all the time. Now the awkward thing is he just starts poking at hits then hitting it hard to make it go away. Most of the people around him noticed and just burst out laughing. In 7th grade, there was this girl that was known for doing all kinds of weird crap. She cut a chunk of her hair off and left it on my friend's desk as a birthday present. Meowed at people and cried when anyone stepped on a bug. The most awkward incident happened when she dropped her pencil during a test. I guess she was too shy to ask the person next to her for it so she tried to stretch for it and ended up flipping her desk over. She then continued to do her test in her desk sideways for another 10 minutes until the teacher told another student to flip her over. This sounds like it could be in sideways stories from Wayside School. In second grade of high school, a student flipped the F out and started throwing chairs and his desk at the teacher because he was refused a test for appraisal upon failing it the first time. Crap got super scary. He was yelling like crazy and the female teacher was trying to protect herself from the things thrown at her. Another teacher next door barged in, grabbed the enraged student, nailed him on the floor, face down, and tied his feet and arms together with his belt and shoelace. I remember him being taken away and we never saw him again. I think the teachers ate him. As a senior in high school government class, my teacher would hit on all the girls in the class. One day he asked one of the girls if she was spanked for bad behavior as a child. And when she said that she had, he quietly asked her if she liked it. While the rest of the class was there, half the room heard, that teacher is super creepy. There was two kids known for playing this joke on substitute teachers. It goes like this. Student A tells a sub to ask student B how many push-ups his grandpa can do. But student B tells a story, while pretending to cry, about how his grandpa lost both his arms in the war. Multiple substitutes broke out in tears crying and had to leave. That is convoluted and evil but also magnificent. My period starting, I was also wearing a white dress and sat in front of a guy I had a huge crush on. Go me. Class bully pouring some of his own pee on the teacher's head. Teacher shrugged it off because it wasn't a lot and didn't know what it was. It wasn't me, but the stories were everywhere. In public grade school our superintendent made a surprise visit and decided to sit in on a random teacher's class. She sat in the back to watch and these two boys in front of her were whispering to each other. She leaned in and whispered that they should pay attention. They did, but two or three minutes later started again. This apparently happened several more iterations before the SR leaned forward and slammed their heads together and shouted pay the frick attention to your teacher. Fired before the end of the school day. This is the goodest fly boy. He will bring you 10 years of happiness in exchange for a like on this video. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.